dear friends and net aspirants welcome back to high point with the place where you will get ample study materials related to nta ugc net jrf english language and literature so like you can see today we are going to learn about every man in his humor which was staged in the year 1598 for the first time so i hope you have watched already my last video about ben johnson his life and Uh, literary career so let's learn about his first literary success or first dramatic su success as a dramatist of london which was which that work is titled as every man in his humor and in which he introduces and elaborates about his theory of humor so before beginning let me tell you about the other platforms that i am per present so i have an instagram page the id is liji maria 90 the id is right here so in which in a daily basis i am sharing daily quiz questions new cards so small videos reels and some other posts related to english language and literature uh, so you if you are uh, there in instagram you can Uh, follow me there if you want it you can save my contents in your uh, id in your page and you can have it whenever you want and also you can share that to your friends too and also i have a whatsapp group in which i am sharing daily quiz questions news and updates related to nta ugc net as well as some study cards uh, in, in that whatsapp group if you want to join the whatsapp group then you can go to the description box the link is there if it if not you can call me or message me directly in this number given Uh, i'll share the link to you and you can join if you are interested and most importantly we have a website known as www.highpoint.in in which i am sharing simplified study materials and well arranged chronologically arranged study materials for ugc net in the form of 900 audio lectures and 300 downloadable uh, pdf materials and also previous and practice set of question papers if you have not yet subscribed to my channel please subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon so that you get a notification whenever i am uploading a video so in this uh, youtube channel you can see that i have also already shared some shorts and i am planning to share more shorts again about uh, literature related to literature so using that quick materials you can really brush up your memory as well as you can know and learn new things related to the The topics that I'm sharing there. So moving on, let's have an introduction to the play. First of all, so it's a play. It's a comedy by Ben Johnson, uh, who is a well-known theatrical artist or dramatist or playwright of the Jacobean era, and he. Uh, has written comedies mainly and also mass so this work every man in his humor belongs to the subgenre known as humorous comedy in which each major character is dominated by an overriding humor or obsession okay so this is what uh, what is humor okay so there are four humors in this play every other character they are overriding with a particular kind of humor and according to that humor they have a particular obsession their characteristics are shaped and maintained according to their humor okay so that is the major thing that he is discussing the that he is emphasizing about his theory of humor according to your humor your character will be according to your humor okay performed by the lord chamberlain men so you know this play was first of all performed by lord chamberlain's men and uh, it was performed at curtain theater in london and it was printed in uh, ben johnson's first folio which was came out in 1616 when was shakespeare's first folio came out in 1623 while J ben johnson's first folio came out in 1616 the year in which shakespeare dies okay uh, connect to something like that and uh, try to memorize things believed that shakespeare also played a part in this play now moving on let's have the character list of the play novel novel say here we can find some type like character that is the name of the character itself reveal the characteristic and feature of that character okay novel novel is an old gentleman edward novel is his son brainworm his servant master stephen is a country girl A country girl means you know he belongs to a country he is a country man in the sense he belongs to a village not urban not a city person and he can, he is a gullible type of man everybody can make him a girl easily george downright a squire well bred his half brother so john downright's half brother is well bred justice clement an old magistrate roger formal 
is his clerk roger formal is his clerk and justice clement actually sends roger formal uh, to investigate upon some case okay and thomas kitley thomas kitley is a merchant dame kitley is his wife mistress brigett his sister okay kitley's sister is a mistress brigett master matthew is a town girl so in uh, uh, master matthew belongs to town city man he is a city man but he is also a girl thomas cash kitley's man so he is basically kitley's cashier oliver cobb a water bearer tib uh, uh, cobb's wife then captain bobardil captain bobardil's poles man a poles man okay so now moving on let's have the summary of the play i have provided act wise summary but it is very difficult when you read the summary and act wise summary or if you are reading the play itself it's very difficult to say the summary of this play because it's like every other minute some one is coming into the stage and someone is going out of the stage some other things are happening in the stage and the play is too much uh, complex in the sense that in, in the sense that the uh, so many actions are going on so i have attempted to give a comprehensible summary to you but still i don't know how far i reached uh, the goal but still i'll try my level best to explain the story to you but you what you have to do you have to pay attention without skipping the video you have to uh, watch this video and listen to it and make notes so let's begin the play opens with a prologue addressing to the audience so the play has an has a prologue so that's the first thing that you can remember and it is addressing the audience and this play will have no absurdities but instead will be realistic in events and language so in that prologue it is said that the play will not have any absurdities but you know any foolish things it won't have any meaningless things basically won't have but it will be realistic in events and language and it will not fetch the audience away to foreign land so that was a trend happening there right if you could remember in many contemporary plays by shakespeare shakespeare is fetching the audience to some far away lands but in this play you won't find a foreign land but it will portray contemporary place and time for people to laugh at so basically this play is to laugh and have delight upon the comedies presented and portrayed in the play okay so that was the sum total of what is going on in the prologue now let's move on to the first act and the first act start with an old man novel at his house so the first act starts with the setting of the first act of the play is novel's house he is an old man and stephen a country man and easily gullible man comes to meet his uncle novel and edward novel his cousin so what happens stephen comes and he is a who is stephen stephen is a country gullible man who can be gullified easily by anyone okay who has a wit so stephen uh, comes to meet novel his uncle and edward novel his son uh, um, basically novel's son his uh, cousin stephen's cousin after a little talk with the servant he leaves now the servant needs to give a letter to edward so uh, servant needs to deliver a letter to edward but instead that uh, uh, novel reads it and uh, novel also is aware that this letter is not addressed to edward but anyway he reads it and he gets offended by the impoliteness about the letter writer young wilbur so young wilbur is the one who has written this letter to edward and he get offended by the content and the impoliteness that the letter possesses okay so he got offended and he finds it's okay to read other person's letter okay sometimes in my, in our families too this will happen we will have little very little privacy he, uh, he then calls brain worm to give the letter to his son and asks not to reveal that he has already read it so then he uh, brain worm is the servant there and brain worm was called and uh, asked to give this letter to the, his son and he was also asked that not to reveal that uh, novel the father has already read it and novel vows he will not force his son to be a good man but will try to compel him to be one freely so this was the thing that novel says that see i know he has some bad company but i won't force him uh, to have to be a good man and all but i'll try and uh, i'll try to compel him so compel is only force only but still he tells that i won't force but i'll try to compel him to be a good person freely 
and brainworm gives the letter and admits to him that his father has read it so brainworm even though he reluctant to he was reluctant initially to reveal that his father has read it but still he admits later that his father has read this letter uh, when he delivered this to edward and stephen enters by asking about the man who delivered the letter so stephen again comes to the stage and asking uh, that who delivered this man sorry who delivered this letter and edward asked him whether he wants to join him to wellbred so edward and wellbred they are exchanging letter wellbred was the one who has written letter to edward so edward asked uh, stephen why are you do you want to join me because i am going to meet wellbred and stephen readily agrees and matthew arrives to cobbs uh, cobbs the water bearer's house looking for a captain bobadil so matthew arrives so matthew is a town girl Uh, you know it's he's legally able person so matthew arrives to cob cob is a water bearer and his house he came uh, looking for captain bobadil and cob says he is his guest but uh, matthew does not believe this but cob insists that the man fall asleep on his bench the night before cob says that see captain bobadil he was his he was his guest but matthew was reluctant to believe this but cob insisted that that man captain bobadil fell asleep on his bench in the last na, last night before so the servant of cob takes matthew to bobadil so after hearing this cob's servant took matthew to bobadil so let's see what happens next the scene ends with the monologue by cob in which he says about the drama in his master kitley's house and his annoyance with bobadil who wow owes his wife tib money so cob's wife's name is tib and uh, bobadil owes money to his wife tib and cob has a kind of monologue there after uh, when matthew left to meet uh, captain Koba- captain bobadil and he uh, tells about the drama going on uh, in his master's life i mean in his master keetley's uh, house and he uh, how he is annoyed with bobadil and uh, the money that he owes to his wife tib and matthew and bobadil meet and bobadil asked him to keep it a secret that he had spent the night there and he agrees so matthew and bobadil meet matthew and bobadil meet in the next scene and bobadil asked him asked the matthew to keep uh, it a secret that he has spent a night there uh, before and he agrees to matthew also agrees with that the conversation moves about the play done by uh, matthew and downright wellbred's brother has insulted it and threatened it to beat matthew so downright comes and he is wellbred's half brother and he insulted it see matthew played a play but um, you know he is fond of making uh, some poems words and all that he thinks that he is great in it but downright actually condemns it and insulted it and threatened to beat matthew if ever he produced produced anything like that uh, after that and bobadil offers him to teach matthew how to fight and they leave to a tavern so bobadil also offers uh, him uh, that means matthew to fight how to fight and they leave to a tavern see bobadil thinks that he is a great fighter and all always boast about his uh, military uh, talent and all but nothing like that that we will know later in the play now there ends act 1 act 2 begins but i know that you may find difficult to you know connect the events happening but still b- uh, towards the end of the play you will get some idea about the play what is happening there act 2 opens in the house to kitley a merchant of old jewelry secretly he is a merchant of old jewelry and the second act opens there now kitley tells to his squire who is squire squire is down down right so he tells to his squire that his wife's brother wellbred has turned disrespectful these days see wellbred um, edward stephen these people are they are young people what kitley novel these people are old people okay there are some conflicts going on the old generation and the new generation the old generation cannot accept the ways of the new generation okay that's one of the major themes in this play actions anger downright while kitley remains calm so you know downright is so agitated about the actions of kitley and he tells many things 
but Keely remains calm. And Boba, Dylan, Matthew and uh, but leaves when they could not find well bred. Okay, so Bobadil and Matthew, they went to practice some, uh, you know, fighting skills. And Bobadil promised Matthew to teach him uh, fighting skills, how to use sword and all. So, when they enter, they could not find well-bred there. So, they left. So, the squire leaves following them. So, Bobadil and Matthew, after leaving, the squire uh, followed them. That means, uh, downright followed them. And Keatley reflects in the possibility of a woman's woman in his life his wife and his sister being overcome by uh, these uh, their lecherous man who are spending time in his house so keely he is a kind of man who has many insecurities about his life that he actually allays to his wife and sister that he thinks that he reflects upon uh, the women that is there in his life like his wife and sister Bridget and also uh, uh, Dame Keatley is there so he thinks that how these men in his house how they are spending uh, you know how they overcome these uh, lecherous men who are surrounded uh, in the family who are there in this family how they are overcoming this so he feels uh, not at most kind of insecurity about uh, the chastity and truthfulness about his wife and his sister and Brainworm, disguised as a soldier, waits for Novel's son to disrupt him from meeting Wellbred. Brainworm, disguised as a soldier, and he waits for Novel's son, Edward. And he wants to disrupt Edward to meet Wellbred. Wellbred is whom? Keatley's wife's brother, right? Okay. So Stephen and Edward enter. And Stephen lost his purse in which he kept the ring of a ring of his mistress. So Stephen and Edward, they come. And uh, Stephen lost his purse in which he kept the ring of his mistress. And Brainworm comes and tries to sell his sword to Stephen and he buys it finally. So Brainworm is disguised as a soldier and he got a rusty sword with him, a useless one. And Brainworm comes and tries to sell this sword to Stephen that he did succeed that he did successfully and even though stephen uh, sorry edward uh, prevented him to buy a you know soldier's sword but anyway stephen buys it so that's why stephen is a country girl and novel is still disappointed about the letter to his son so novel now also he is thinking about the letter that he found uh, in the beginning of the story he delivers a speech about how parenting has gone wrong now that he is not doing with his son even though his son has gone astray for his displease so what happens he, he tells about he delivers a speech about how parenting is not doing well how parenting has gone wrong nowadays even though he is a good parent he is not doing anything bad to his son but his son has gone astray for his displease Brainworm, disguised as a soldier, appears before Novel and begged for beer and money. Okay, Brainworm, again disguised as a soldier, appears before Novel and begged for beer and money. And he scolds, uh, scolds the soldier for begging. So, you know, uh, Novel, he never, uh, you know, identified Brainworm as, uh, the soldier as Brainworm. But he scolds that, uh, you know, uh, soldier for begging he can do better things right he has health so he can do something else instead of begging and novel t says he will show him how to find a work when the soldier claimed that he cannot find a work so for doing begging uh, novel scolded him so novel said that you know I, he can show him how to find a work a worthy work for himself when the soldier claimed that you know he could not find any work, a worthy work, other than begging. So there ends Act 2nd. Act 3 begins and Act 3 takes place in a tavern with Matthew, Bobadil and Wellbred. So Wellbred, Bobadil and Matthew, these people are there in tavern. And Matthew and Bobadil speak that they don't like Wellbred's brother downright. So 
These three people are there in the tavern, Matthew, Bobadil and Wellbred. And these three people, especially Matthew and Bobadil, they speak that they don't like Wellbred's brother downright. Okay, Wellbred's brother downright, they don't agree with him. So Edward and Stephen also enter there. So later Edward and Stephen, uh, they all enter. So these five people, they are young people basically. And Wellbred and Edward laugh at the letter that he sent to El Edward and how it was wrongly delivered to Norval. So, Wellbred sent a letter to Edward in the initial part of the play, we know that. And uh, they laugh at uh, how, uh, you know, wrongly it was delivered to Norval and what was his reaction, must have been his reaction. Then everyone of them insulted Stephen for having a common sword that he brought from Brainworm. So, Stephen in the last act, we have seen that Stephen uh, brought that... Uh, you know, silly sword from Brainworm who was disguised as a soldier and everyone insulted for having that sword, ins insulted Stephen for having that common sword. And Brainworm comes and admits that he made him to buy that silly knife and uh, told that novel is after them and they, ha they have to leave the place. So after hearing this from Brainworm that novel is after them, novel is in search of them and they have to leave the place and they, they left the place at once. And Cash and Keatley talks and Keatley refuses to tell something to him as he said he could not keep it as a secret. So now the scene shifts to Keatley's house and Cash and Keatley, they were talking and Keatley refuses to tell something to Cash because Cash said that he could not keep that as a secret. And before Cash departing, he asked that uh, whether Velbert comes to his house with the company of other men and also asked to keep the financial affairs from his wife Dame Keatley. So before Cash departing from Keatley, he asked whether Velbert with some other company of young men come to uh, their place, their house and also asked him to keep the financial affairs from that information about financial affairs of Keatley from his wife Dame Keatley. And after that, Cobb enters and distressed and Cash consoles him. Then Matthew, Bobardi, Stephen, Velbert, Brainworm, Stephen enter. So these people together as a company, they enter when they left the tavern and they talk about tobacco this time. And Cash re-enters looking for a servant to inform Keatley about his men. So now this, the, the, the group of people, the young men, they are talking about tobacco. So tobacco, alcohol, these are major topics of Young people, right? They talk about tobacco this time and Cash re-enters looking for a servant to inform Keatley about this man. So Keatley earlier asked about uh, whether men are coming with the well to their house. So uh, Cash want to inform this to Keatley. And Cobb also comes and talks about the recent deaths uh, attributed to co tobacco. So Cobb, uh, to that group of young men, he comes and he talks about the recent death attributed to tobacco and how tobacco is unhealthy for human beings. So after hearing this, Bobadil beats him while others pull him away. While Keatley was at Justice Clement, so Keatley left the place while they're there. So after Keatley left for Justice Clement, this group of young men came and had the talk about tobacco and Cobb warned him of the men in his house. So Cobb also warned uh, you know, Keatley about the man in his house and this worried him thinking about his wife and sister. See, while Keatley was uh, with uh, Justice Clement in order to, you know, complain about something, Cobb warned him that a group of men are there in your house. So this actually worried the insecure, uh, insecure Keatley uh, when thinking about his wife and sister. And Cobb wants to revenge upon Bobadil. And why he mentioned this thing to Keatley? Because he wanted to revenge upon Bobadil. Because, because Bobadil insulted and uh, made trouble with him when he uh, said about the unhealthy nature of tobacco. Next, later Cobb got arrested by Justice Clement when they talked about Bobadil and he talked ill about tobacco. So later we can see that. Uh, see, Cobb told that uh, the whole scenario happened, how he got beaten by, uh, you know, Stephen and also uh, Cobb got arrested by Justice Clement when he talked about Bobadil because he talked about ill about tobacco. That was not intolerant to Justice Clement too. So he got arrested. So that's how Act 3 MC. Many, uh, even though he told that many absurd things 
uh, no absurd things will be there but still considering the uh, situation of london of that time he uh, he mainly portrays these topics of tobacco you know uh, disguising insecure husband all these things and the old generation versus versus the young generation all these things the conflict is going on inside the london society is portrayed in a in a in a peculiar way in his play okay so there ends act 3 now act 4 the men are in keatley's house and keatley's sister briget and matthew are flirting while downright threatens them to leave the house so everybody the men group of young men mentioned earlier all of them are in Keatley's house, but Keatley is not present there. And Keatley's sister Brigitte and Matthew. Matthew is an urban girl. Remember? So Master Matthew is there. Brigitte and Matthew, they are flirting with each other. And downright, the squire comes and threatens them to leave the house. They draw the sword to fight against downright, but Cash pulled them apart and Keatley enters. So when uh, downright threatened them to go out of this house, all of them drew their sword and they started to fight against downright but cash came to that situation and pulled them apart and keatley enters at that moment he felt stressed so when keatley entered naturally this young man left the house and he felt stressed when his wife admitted that he she got impressed by edward and decided to search for him so what happened his wife revealed to him this insecure man that uh, you know he got impressed by edward Edward is Novel's son and he uh, he means Keatley decided to search for him and to teach a lesson and Cobb tells his wife not to admit anyone in the house. Cobb tells his wife, Cobb tells, Cobb goes to Tib and tells that do not admit any young man to this house and Edward admits to being in love with Bridget. So once they came out Keatley's house, so Ed, Edward tells that you know he is in love with Bridget and Velbred wants to bring them together and this is another thing about young people right when your friend is in love with somebody it you will take it as your own responsibility to bring them together right back to Moorfield so Moorfield is the is the place of novel okay initially the play begins in Moorfield a place known as Moorfield so back of the Moorfield, Bobadil and Matthew fence a little and Bobadil boast about his fencing skills while Downright comes and disarm him easily. So Downright is a person who doesn't like these young people much and Bobadil and Matthew they were practicing fencing and Bobadil boast about like always Bobadil uh, boast about his fencing skill, his uh, skill with the swords and knives and all. So while he was telling that on that same moment just then downright comes and disarm him very easily and back in Keatley's house brainworm enters disguised as roger formal formal and says clement wants to see him see what happens brainworm here uh, disguised as roger formal okay roger formal he is an assistant come a kind of investigator of uh, Justice Clement and Justice Clement appointed the real Roger Formal to look up at the look at the case or find some evidences and the clear nature of the case of Keatley. So Keatley was there. So Brainworm comes back to Keatley's house, disguised as Roger Formal, and he informed disguised as Roger Formal that uh, Keatley was wanted by Justice Clement to see him. And Keatley leaves by telling to Cash to keep an eye on his wife, okay? So Keatley is an insecure man. He doesn't want to leave the place, his house. So he wanted Cash to keep an eye at his wife. Now Brigitte Wellbred talks about uh, her admirers and she decided to meet with Edward. So now a situation comes that Keatley is not more there. So Wellbred comes and he tells to Brigitte that, you know, Edward is in love with you. So, Brigid also decided to meet with Edward. And Keatley comes back and got angry when learned that Cash and his wife went somewhere. So, Keatley actually asked Cash to keep an eye with his wife. So, instead when Keatley comes back, he came to know that Cash and his wife together, they went somewhere. So, Novel comes to Cobb's house looking for his son, but Cobb's wife took uh, his for a constable but talk to him so cope initially uh, just before this we 
we we already seen that Cobb asked his wife Tip not to uh, enter anyone inside the house. So Novel comes to Cobb's house looking for his son, but Cobb's wife Tib took him as a constable, but uh, he she talked to him. And Brainworm now enter as a legal officer like Roger Formal who, to arrest Wellbred as told by Matthew and Bobadil. Complaints were against Wellbred. So Matthew and Bobadil they had complaints about Wellbred. So Brainworm he entered as a legal officer now arrested Wellbred. But Brainworm got arrested instead for stealing downright clocks. So if you remember that you know when Bobadil and Matthew they were practicing fencing downright came there and he disarmed uh, uh, you know uh, bobadil very easily so there brainworm actually stole downright's coat uh, and also roger formal was also a drunken there somewhere and he also uh, stole the apparels and the uh, clothes of roger formal that's how he disguised himself as roger formal and uh, when uh, Brainworm came as a legal officer to arrest Wellbred, he got arrested. Brainworm got arrested for stealing Downright's cloaks when Edward mistakenly came there with it. So Edward actually came there with uh, the stolen cloth of Downright, which was stolen by Brainworm. But now he is in the disguise of Ro Roger Formal. But it was uh, Downright's cloaks were stolen by brainworm and edward brought that with with him there and all of them head to clement so uh, in act five we can see the scene is there uh, in the place of justice clement where novel kitley dame kitley tib cash cob and servants are in, uh, all there and the bottle matthew enters with the downright stephen and brainworm also enters and Brahman reveals himself and the tricks that he played on himself. So here all the tricks are played by Brainworm only. So turning these uh, two people, two generation people into each other. That was uh, Brainworm's trick and to have his own benefits. And uh, because of his humor, he is doing like that. And Roger Formal now entered and be apologetic about drinking and had his clothes stolen. Actually Brainworm did it earlier. In order to disguise as uh, Roger Formal and trick upon mm, whom? Keatley. Okay. So Roger Formal also enters and he uh, apologized about drinking too much ale and lost his uh, clothes and uh, it was stolen by whom? Brainworm earlier. And Wellbred reveals Edward and Brigitte's marriage. There Wellbred reveals Edward and Brigitte got married and Justice Clement tells each, each person to clean themselves in their overweening emotions and they will they all celebrate so what happens these people they have some overflow overflowing and overweening emotions and uh, because of their humor so justice clement asked them to clean themselves of their uh, overweening emotion and they can all celebrate the marriage between edward and bridget okay so that was the confusing summary of every man in his humor just remember some of the events happened and the worthy characters, important characters of the play, uh, at least for you to make the clever judgments about the questions. Okay, now let's see some themes that are there in the play. Mankind's follies and foibles. So this is one of the major themes that we can find in every other satire of uh, Ben Johnson and the power of the law, youth versus old, city versus country, the importance of harmony and the humor. So the humors, mankind's follies and foibles, these are the and youth versus old and city versus country. So these are the important and major themes in this play by Ben Johnson. So I hope this was uh, you know somewhat helpful. I am not satisfied about the summary of this play, but still I did my level best to bring up bring about a comprehensible summary here. But still, if you have any doubts, queries, you can obviously message me or you can have a, you can leave a comment in the comment section. And also you can find me in other platforms like my website www.hypon.in. Go and visit it and use the Chrome. Try to enter into my website. And www.hypon.in provides ample study materials related to NTA, UGC, NET, JRF, English language and literature. And if you want to know more about the course that we are providing, 
and there you can message me in here the number given on the screen and also if you want to join the whatsapp group that i mentioned earlier you can go to the description box and click the link and join it or if not you can message me directly in the number i will share the link with you and you can join and don't forget to follow me in uh, instagram if you also have an instagram page my id is right here liji maria 90 and uh, there you will find a lot more uh, materials in a daily basis about english language and literature so that's all about it and if you yet not subscribe to my youtube channel please subscribe to my youtube channel and encourage me by clicking the like button and while you subscribe to it please press the uh, bell icon too so that you get a notification whenever i update a video so that's all about it thank you for watching this video meet you in the next video session until then enjoy your life and happy learning